Did you know that Sanji's Diablo Jamba was foreshadowed all the way back on Baratier? In fact, Sanji's inspiration comes from a most unlikely source, the ever powersome Pearl. During his fight with Sanji, Pearl set himself on fire, fire which had no effect on Pearl for checks notes, reasons, and in fact, Pearl even coated himself in blue flames, which Sanji has now mimicked with a free Jamba. So I suppose you could, and in fact, I will say that Sanji has only just very recently caught up to where Pearl was at the beginning of the series. Come to think of it, Sanji didn't even beat Pearl, it was Gein who did it. But now here's 55 more facts about Sanji. According to author of the pirate comic, Etchiro Oda, many people speculated that Sanji's design was based on Leonardo DiCaprio, remembering that Sanji was introduced in 1988, one year after Titanic came out. So this was like peak Leo craze. But in truth, Sanji's aesthetics were modeled after Steve Buscemi's character, Mr. Pink in Reservoir Dogs, a role which Quentin Tarantino originally wrote for himself. So weirdly enough, Sanji's entire design hinges on the whims of Quentin Tarantino. If he decided to play the part himself, then we would have ended up with a radically different cook. And I'm not saying that Oda would have based the design on the alternate Mr. Pink, but he would have had to look elsewhere. But speaking of alternates, a very different Sanji does exist in Oda's alternate One Piece timeline. One which goes much further into the future as we see Sanji go through a bit of a Fabio phase in his 40s before ultimately settling on inheriting the aesthetics of Zeph by the age of 60. However, there is also a bad alternate timeline. And in this dark universe, Sanji becomes an increasingly obese chain smoker and eventually inherits both the German kingdom and the fashion sense of his biological father, Vin Smoke Judge, a man who refuses to do the household ironing, but whose story is filled with irony. Irony, irony, whose story, man, story, irony. As Sanji is the only Vin Smoke sibling who actually inherited Judge's biological characteristics, specifically the blonde hair. The others were so altered by fictional science that eyebrows aside, they became completely different globs of DNA. And while it took over 800 chapters for us, the readers, to finally be invited to Vin Smoke family dinner, Sanji's heritage was foreshadowed in a multitude of ways beforehand, such as during the Jaya shipwreck, where Sanji lingers on a photo of a woman who reminds him of his mother. Meanwhile, when using a snail phone to contact Crocodile, Sanji used the alias of Mr. Prince, which also makes perfect sense because Sanji is trying to hide who he is. And at this point, the thing it is that he isn't is a prince. In fact, for much of the series, Sanji was the most elusive straw hat, and he maintained a lot of this mystique through the radically varied bounty posters, each depicting him in a highly stylized state. My favorite Sanji bounty will always be the hand-drawn one, and we actually know who was responsible for this. A world government photographer by the name of Attach was tasked with taking Sanji's photo, which he did, but he left the lens cap on the camera. And furthermore, Attach was promptly fired after Marine for due to his quote, 57th instance of forgetting to remove the lens cap. And Attach now works directly for Big News Morgan, so we'll see if his self-imposed censorship continues. Sanji, however, has been a notorious victim of censorship elsewhere though, specifically through the Four Kids dub where they replaced his trademark cigarette with his now ironically trademark lollipop, which was actually referenced in chapter 831, where the crew encounter a mirror clone of Sanji holding his Four Kids lollipop. To be perfectly honest though, of all of the Four Kids censorship, I think that this is one of the better moves because Sanji does have quite an intimate relationship with smoking. And over the course of One Piece, we have identified that Sanji is a bit of a smoking polygamist, committing to two particular brands of cigarettes, one named King Ground and the other just flat out named Death, which I guess is like the equivalent of naming a soft drink diabetes. Strangely, there is a running theory that Sanji's cigarettes are cursed because everyone who lights one of Sanji's cigarettes ends up dying. Ace lit one on Alabaster and then bleh, he's dead. Pedro then lit one on Whole Cake Island and bleh, now he is also a dead, with the one and only saving grace being that God Enel unintentionally lit one of his cigarettes on Skypea. However, Enel also died during that arc, but he was fortunate enough to have an ability to restart his own heart. So the Sanji curse is currently three for three. Now our cook boy is not known for being aesthetically subtle, and one such element is Sanji's insanely detailed blingsome golden lighter. The shape of the lighter is actually a mermaid cradling her tail, which is a pose that would go on to be realized by Princess Shirohoshi. Also, this lighter actually exists and it's made by a French company called Dupont, which judging by my terrible French, apparently means from the bridge or of the bridge. I'm not sure which, I'm not good at French. And the process of how this happened is called defictionalization, which is when you take something that doesn't exist and bring it into reality. You should be careful if you wanna try and buy one of these lighters though, because they are subject to a lot of counterfeiting. Dupont is sort of like the lighter equivalent of Rolex. Sanji himself does have quite a bit of unique merch though, such as when Shueisha even brought out a Sanji cookbook. It's called Pirate Recipes and it's a legitimately good book, filled with all sorts of fun, delicious recipes with a one piece twist. Bigger twist now though, because in this video about Sanji, here is Zoro. And we're all familiar with his English translation fiasco, transforming his name from Zoro into Zolo, 
though. But did you know that the same thing happened with Sanji, but in French? In French then, Sanji's name was originally dubbed as Sandy, which is how the French manga translated it for a while as well. Although they did eventually correct the name to Sanji. However, it wasn't until Les Soissons Septième Tome. And while we're here, I guess we should also point out that Sanji himself is French. In fact, il est très français. Because Etchira Oda stated that Sanji would be from France in the real world, and most of his attack names are in French. Although post time skip, a lot of his attacks have been named in English as well. Also post time skip, Sanji is a bit of a joke and for good reason. Sanji is one of Oda's go-to comedy characters and his trolling once went so far that he looked Sanji's voice actor dead in the eyes and said, Sanji will never be cool again. That voice actor is Hiroaki Hirata, by the way, and he's quite the humor smith himself, often adopting Sanji's traits as his own. In fact, one year on Zoro's birthday, all of the voice actors delivered Zoro a special written message. However, Hirata's message was left completely blank and was held up with a comically displeased facial expression. All right, really weird kind of mind effing fact right now. Sanji and Chopper have the same voice actor, technically. Because child Sanji is voiced by Ikue Otani, who we know better as Tony Tony Chopper, or even much more better than that, we know her as Pikachu. Pikachu. <laughs> And she also voices Konohamaru in Naruto, which is a very special series to Sanji, because Sanji's original name was actually Naruto, Datebayo. But after learning that there was another series starting soon actually called Naruto, Oda did the gentlemanly thing and changed his character's name. Although allegedly Naruto author Masashi Kishimoto was more than willing to change the name if Oda wanted to use it. But very much unable to escape his shinobi connection, Sanji was once featured on an episode of Death Battle where his opponent was Rock Lee of Naruto fame. The premise was something along the lines of Rock Lee disses Sanji's curry, which then immediately triggers a death battle where Sanji ultimately emerge victorious. Seems legit. But what seems a lot less legit is Sanji's favorite type of island in the Grand Lion. In an SBS, Sanji answered that his favorite island was a quote, Robin Chan on a Nami-san island, which caused Usopp to remark, that's stupid, you're stupid. And in case you're wondering how it's possible for fictional characters to be interviewed, well, Oda actually does that a lot. When he gets asked a question, he often just lets the characters answer for him. Another example example that appears quite commonly in the SBS segment is Sanji showcasing his superpower of being accurately able to assess a woman's bust, waist, and hip size based on visual alone. And Sanji has, on multiple occasions, publicly revealed Nami and Robin's sizes, and also Boa Hancock's on one occasion. He's sort of like a pacifista for perverts. A quality that would go on to be enhanced via the Chopper Man universe, where Dr. Uso Dabada produces a creature named Sanji Rops, a cybernetic lizard who, quote, always insists that he's not a pervert, but always has perverted thoughts and does perverted things. So again, he's like a pacifista for perverts. Within the alternate universe continuity, Sanji has also appeared as a tentacle alien, a soccer player, and an elephant to name just a few, with each of them maintaining Sanji's trademark qualities, all culminating in an existence known as Eroslime. Why is Sanji like this though? Well, there's actually a very popular theory that it's to do with his siblings. Ichiji, Niji, and the other one were all born without emotions. And the idea is that everything ended up inside of Sanji. So he feels everything three times as intensely, hence the uncontrollable lust. But the real question would be, is Sanji a bust man or a butt man? Except it isn't. Because the real, real question is, is Sanji a leg man or a foot man? Because depending on the translation, it's quite difficult to discern. Sanji's epithet in One Piece is Kuroashi, with Kuro meaning black and Ashi meaning both leg and foot. And as a result, this causes some inconsistencies across English translations and sometimes within the same company. For example, I believe that the Funimation subs use black foot, whereas the Funimation dub uses as black leg. But Sanji's qualities have also been translated into entirely different manga series, most notably Shokugeki no Sanji, a series by Food Wars author Yuto Skuda, which takes the reader on a journey through One Piece via the lens of cooking. It's a surprisingly good series and my favorite installment is chapter two, because that's the one where Sanji has to use, and this is a direct quote, he has to use Zoro's big boy sword to cut through a particularly big fish. But with a spin-off manga series, a cookbook, and very expensive DuPont merch, Sanji has become something of a fictional celebrity, and even has his own life-size statue in Oda's hometown of Kumamoto at the Mashiki Sports Park. And with such fame, Sanji even has his own in-world autograph, depicted here with a very exaggerated J and a curious kiss dotting the eye, leading many to suspect that Sanji wears lipstick, which to be fair, he did on at least one occasion during his time at Momoiro Island, but the truth is probably even more bizarre, because the ever so delicately planted kiss is done in the same substance as the ink. So what probably happens is that Sanji signs his name 
then douses his lips in ink and applies the kiss. Curious, but it's far from the strangest thing that Sanji has ever done. As weirdly enough, Sanji currently holds the One Piece record for most amount of people to share his body. And no, I don't mean that in a sexual way, for a change. I mean that Sanji has literally had three people inhabit his body. There's Sanji himself, of course. However, during Punk Hazard, both Nami and Chopper took the Cookmobile for a spin. And while there were other body swaps, everyone else only had to deal with a single guest inside their fleshy vessels. But also Sanji has something for the inside of your fleshy vessel. As due to his status as fictional chef, Sanji was heavily featured in the One Piece McDonald's collaboration for the special Tuts to Burger, a concept which I believe is actually trademarked by McDonald's, who made an ad recreating the famous Sanji Zef Cook dynamic scene at the end of Whole Cake Island. A much less well-known dynamic, however, is the relationship between Sanji and Brooke. It doesn't get showcased often, but Sanji identifies significantly with Brooke. What with the whole being classical gentlemen with interests in very ungentlemanly pursuits. And Sanji has a similar dynamic with Frankie, actually. This one is showcased even less, but both of them are intensely emotional men who bear the label of pervert, albeit for different reasons. However, to cement their manly bond, Sanji even struck Frankie's trademark superpose on Punk Hazard, notably using Kinemon's head to get the shape right. And these three actually form a trio within the crew. Sanji, Brooke, and Frankie are often collectively referred to as the pervert trio by fans. Although again, these are the two crew members who Sanji has interacted with the least. Sanji even has a more fleshed out relationship with Jinbei, although I should say it's not a great one. Sanji has a one-sided beef with Jinbei, which is, it's a very long story, and I've made a whole video detailing just this single relationship, but it's a very fun Homer Simpson's Ned Flanders kind of dynamic, where Sanji is constantly annoyed at Jinbei, and Jinbei has zero awareness of what's going on at all. Despite these emotional outbursts though, Sanji is arguably the most intelligent member of the crew. He has a keen ability to always be able to see the bigger picture, and even using that to accurately predict the future and positioning himself perfectly as a result. Whereas other figures like Luffy and Zoro have too much tunnel vision, meanwhile, members like Nami and Usopp have too many tears blocking their vision due to all of the fear that they're having, but Sanji is almost always reliable. Quite sturdy as well, mainly due to his genetic modifications, abilities that have always been active to some degree, but after donning the raid suit have been fully unlocked, and you can tell when Sanji is using his enhancements because his eyebrows flip to the opposite direction, which is weird, very weird sort of way that he can like reconstruct his own face. But to be fair, it's not just his own face because Sanji possesses one of the most bizarre and surreal techniques in the series, whereby through the power of assorted kick fighting, Sanji is capable of reconstructing a person's entire face, just as he did with Wanzi and Duval. Speaking of Duval though, there is a crazy connection here. As a child, Sanji was forced to wear an iron mask to conceal his identity. And as an adult, Duval chose to wear an iron mask to conceal his identity purely because he looks like Sanji. The world just seems to have something against showing Sanji's face, which is an absolute affront to the Okama who loves Sanji-chan's face. And throughout the series, Sanji has been something of an Okama magnet, beginning by clashing with Bonclay on Alabasta and culminating with his quote, training with Ivankov. And despite his very loud distaste for the experience, Sanji did learn at least one of Ivankov's attacks, which is the one where Ivankov launches at his opponent feet first, which Sanji went on to use against the Seraphim on Egghead Island. Sanji also has a fun variety of non-canon attacks as well, one of which is called Sexy Fire, which was showcased in film Z. It essentially does the exact same thing that Hell Memories does, except Sexy Fire is born from positive feelings. Those positive feelings being primarily Nami. Also, I have to point this out, but Sanji has one of my absolute favorite, just dumb attack names in all of One Piece. So you know how Sanji can use moves like Blue Walk and Skywalk? Well, in Unlimited World Red, Sanji adds another of these to his arsenal, which is a fearsome attack called Ground Walk which is just the most underwhelming name. I mean, I can use ground walk. Look, I'm, I'm doing it right now. And I guess it's one of those things that probably sounds a lot more impressive in Japanese. Sanji is considered to be quite impressive in Japanese, so much so that he makes surprise cameos in other series. The most iconic of which is undoubtedly Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei, where during class it is revealed that Meru has secretly been reading a Yaoi Dojinshi featuring the Sanji Zoro pairing. Let's be real though, Sanji is a figure that has completely transcended Japanese. Japanese media. And our Straw Hat Cook even made an appearance in the American animated series Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, a Marvel series produced by Disney, and thus meaning that Sanji is officially part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's quite the shocking revelation, but nowhere near as shocking as this next one. At no stage in the series has Sanji ever been shown with both eyes revealed. One or the other has always been obscured by hair or hearts or something. There is but one single exception to this, one single and disturbing exception. As during the Alabaster anime, Toei made a bold decision to include 
this shot of Sanji with both eyes revealed, which to me just looks like a big old pile of fecal spaghetti, both hideous and confusing. You may also be confused as to why Sanji uses the word Melorin from time to time, generally when simping over Nami. Because what does Melorin even mean? Well, in Japanese, it means nothing, but in English, it means something. Melorin is a low cost imitation ice cream that was made in the United States as a product of necessity because butter fat was unable to be sourced. Now, as for why Sanji uses this to proclaim his love for Nami, well, this becomes a bit of a linguistic mess, but it serves as a combination of the word Mero, meaning love, and the word tangerine, meaning tangerine. And I don't know if that provides you with more or less context because sometimes Sanji's whims are they're a bit incomprehensible, but other times they are as clear as glass noodles. For example, Sanji's philosophy on not harming women is so profound that in the Pirate Warriors game series, Sanji is literally programmed to be unable to attack female characters. And this is such a detriment that the developers had to add a warning box informing the players of female enemies if they select Sanji. We do have a, a bit of a slight problem though because Sanji may have actually broken this rule. The Sanji conundrum goes as follows. Would Sanji harm a woman to save a woman? And in this case, we have a case study and the answer may be yes. As when Big Mom attacked Reiju, Sanji blocked her attack with an attack and then went on to tell Luffy not to fight because quote, I'm doing it. Thus leaving us with three words, Sanji fight woman. And yes, you could argue that it was only a block an attack used as a block. And to be fair, this is our only example of Sanji gray area in the series. However, he is subject to a flat out continuity error though, as in chapter 464, Sanji reveals that he has read the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. And that, then that's a problem. Because in chapter number long time ago on Baratie, Zeph had to explain to Sanji how Devil Fruit users functioned. Oh, and also Sanji made his famed claim on the 10th anniversary of One Piece. And I actually have this issue of Weekly Shonen Jump because Luffy has a nice gold hat. If we go through it, I bet we can find the exact spot. And here it is, Sanji claiming to have read the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. And as a bit of a bonus, here is Absalom calling Sanji a pervert. Meanwhile, probably the most interesting thing about Sanji is that after 55, finding cool facts about Sanji gets very tricky. So much so that in a list of quote, 100 mind blowing facts about Vin Smoke Sanji, they had to resort to the following. Vin Smoke Sanji is a fictional character in the One Piece manga and anime series. Wow, mind, mind blown. But that's 56 facts about Sanji that you may or may not have known.